Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in to Winning Cures Everything. It is my Tuesday night solo show, but I'm not solo today. I have my good friend from Northwestern. He is uh, one of the three members of the West Lot Pirates, our uh, really good friends that Gary and I have made. And we are going to do a draft night live uh, event. We did one last year. They did one two years before that without me because I was off seeing the Avengers. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Sam, how are you, sir? I'm good, my friend. Uh, hey, there's no shade going to watch uh, the Avengers, man. It, it's, there is Avengers a draft is night when, when your team is expected to, <laughs> to be a big deal, but I I couldn't turn it down. I couldn't turn it down. Before we get into the show, uh, I got to tell everybody, go to the website, winningcureseverything.com. Gary's worked his butt off to make that thing look good. You can find any information you need about us, all the stuff for the draft night special that will be – I'm sure on YouTube, I'm sure on Facebook, I'm sure on on Twitch and all the other things that Gary sends it out on. You can find out how to get there and the links for it all uh, at the website. And then one other thing I want to hit on today, before we get into the nuts and bolts of it, on this day, I got every show that I do myself, Sam, I I make it all about me. So um, on this day, 1939, a legend, a hero, Ted Williams took his first uh, uh, major league appearance uh, with the Red Sox in Yankee Stadium. Little Ted Williams fact. 1941, Joe DiMaggio has the 56-game hit streak. Ted Williams, let me let me get this right before I before I butcher it real quick. Ted Williams' OPS that year was higher than Joe DiMaggio's, and Joe huh. DiMaggio had the 56-game hit streak. No kidding. That that's that's wild. That, yeah, yeah. Well, the dude happy was happy anniversary to, to Ted Williams, man. Yeah, yeah. He's so amazing. We are going to hit a lot of draft stuff, and then if we've got time, Sam is one of the few friends that I can talk hockey with. I have a few hockey things that I want to bring up, but Sam is a big Broncos fan, so we're going to get Absolutely. into his team. We're going to get into some of the Northwestern guys. Uh, let's let's jump right into the draft. Let's start where everybody always wants to start with drafts. You you got five quarterbacks. What do you think is going to happen this year? How would you rank the the big five? And and are all five even in your big five? Well, I, I think the the top five are probably all there. I can't think of any of the other quarterbacks like Davis Mills or. Kyle Trask, any of those guys would I put above any of the the top five? I, I think you know Trevor Lawrence is pretty much a no brainer at number one. Zach Wilson at two, I I guess. I mean, he had a great year. I you know I would like to see him up, up against tougher opponents. He had a great year though last year. Absolutely. Um, do I think the Jets taking him at two is is the right move for them? Ugh, we'll see. They are the Jets after all. Yeah. Um, the, the big question is, is at three. For me, it's Justin Fields without a doubt. I think so too, man. Uh, I, he, I, watching him play at Ohio State, he's, he's amazing. And you know, no shade on Trey Lance, no shade on Mac Jones. I mean, both, go, both those guys are great. I think Justin Fields is a step above. Do the 49ers take him at three? That's the big question. I mean, like that, what the Niners do at three – I think really kind of takes takes things would take the draft in a bunch of different directions. And I'd be, I'm really, really interested to see what the Niners do. So that's where the draft starts. I have the very contrarian opinion, not trying to just be a contrarian for contrarian sake. I, I really do think, I think Kyle Shanahan really believes he can do this with anybody. I've kind of seen him do it with just anybody's and 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 I think he's going to take a quarterback later. I think they moved up to get the number one player in the draft, which is Kyle Trask. I mean, which is uh, Kyle Pitts. Sorry, I got my Kyles from Florida mixed up. I mean, it's, it's easy to get them confused. Yeah. But, yeah, they look a lot alike. But anyway, um, <laughs> they it, the thing is, is 
I think he's the best player in the draft. I think if quarterbacks weren't the premium that quarterbacks are, I do think there's a world where a tight end would go number one overall um, for the first time it, in it, history. It's, it's, especially with the way that like Travis Kelsey. Yeah, and has changed, Kelsey, well, like, Gronk changed the game. Changed Travis the game. Kelsey changed the game. Before them, Tony Gonzalez kind of mm -hmm. started this whole tight ends Shannon can Sharp. dominate. Uh, and you look at uh, – look at – I think Kyle Shanahan and Bill Belichick are are mind melds. Okay, I think they see the world very similarly. I think they're. I think he saw Bill got his two tight ends. I think Kyle wants to run the two best tight ends in football. His guys are about a decade younger than the two that Bill's got. And he's about a decade, or well, he's several decades younger than Bill. He's going to try to do it his way. I, that, I until I see a quarterback's name going there. I'm going to think it's I'm going to think it's Pitts. The, which would the, oh, greatly change the draft by the way. Oh, completely. Every mock um, draft goes in the toilet from that point forward. George Kittle. I mean, he is one of the best tight ends in football. I you know, I think if he's see, healthy, he's a lot better than um than Kelsey. I, I do. He yeah, just I mean, on the no doubt as much he's, as Kelsey. He's phenomenal. You you got to wonder though. Do you really, you know, Put all your eggs in a two tight end set. Yeah. Especially in two tight ends who aren't necessarily blocking tight ends. Well, Kittle is. Yeah. Kittle's absolutely a blocking tight end. Not not in the traditional set. I mean, he do, he does a great job blocking, yeah. but I wouldn't consider he's not like a, a big, bulky. No, like, oh, okay. He's not Gronk, but the, none of these tight ends that can catch the football are Gronk. And like he's that's true. He's the unicorn. He's the best blocking tight end out of all the big pass catching tight ends we've had. I mean, he's better than Ertz was. He's worlds better than than Kelsey was. I I think they they give you such a mismatch, especially in the red zone. I think the two tight end set is going to change football. I really do. I think it's going to change offenses, and other teams are going to have to adapt and evolve. Um, tight ends are going to become more of a premium. It's going to just evaluate, it, it, reconfigure the game. Um, well, and with Pitts, though, I mean, he lined up wide more yes. often than he lined up. In, I mean, Pitts is just a – he's a freak. He, 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 so he realistically good. is a wide receiver. That's why you can justify taking him over any of the other wide receivers – um, there. All right. So just, just for, for my sanity's sake, how do sure. you have the other two quarterbacks ranking? How would you take them if you were the GM and you had the fifth pick in the first, okay. You had the fourth pick and the first okay. three are gone. So the first three, first three are gone. I think. Do you, I hang would... on. Do you have Wilson in your world? Wilson's behind fields though, right? Yeah, uh, My, but, mine too. By the way, yeah. Like, I, if I, I was the Fields, Jets, I'd be taking, I'd be taking Fields. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. I think Fields is is the second best quarterback in the draft. All right, We're Wil the Wilson. Team. Yeah, but the Jets are going to take Wilson. Fine. Okay, right. whatever. Good for them. They can continue to be mired in the in the muck that they are continue to be mired in, um, and that's fine. You know, they can draft first next year. <sighs> Number three, I, I like what I've seen from Trey Lance. Do I, you know, he's just such an unknown quantity. I mean, playing at North Dakota State, the the, the big kind of uh, albatross is Carson Wentz. Yeah. He comes from the same Carson Wentz system. Wentz, you know, it had, we've yet to see Wentz at his full uh, potential, really. And like him moving to Indianapolis, I think makes a lot of sense for Wentz. But, you know, it's hard to look at Trey Lance and not have that kind of Carson Wentz question mark in the back of your head. I mean, Lance has a ton of talent. He's phenomenal, but ugh, the question marks, but Mac Jones uh, on the flip side, it, how good is Mac Jones without the rest of the Alabama death star around him? That's right. That's the that, question. That, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a great way to put it. Um, my, so I am buying more into the propaganda for Lance uh, I've watched the ESPN like special on him that came on. I don't know. It was like three in the morning. I couldn't sleep. Sure. They were sure. doing all the quarterbacks. I'm sure I just, I just caught his. Um, and, and I'm not just because he played at North Dakota state. I'm not, I'm not marrying him necessarily to Wentz. Is, is he, is, could he be Josh Allen? Which is pretty amazing because that's Wyoming. That's, that's sure. That's, that's just a, that's just a golf ball shot away from, 
from North Dakota State. Same well, and, and football, kind of. Same same program. I mean, Craig Bolt went yes. from North Dakota State to Wyoming. So, yeah. So 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 system. while while it's easy to say Wentz was a bust, well, Allen doesn't look I, to be a bust. So well, I, I think I think that took out it took Allen a while before he you know one year. Emerged. Wait a minute. I, I think, I think he only had one like year. Years. Well, Allen last was year was his third year, but his second year he made the playoffs. Uh, but was he, he wasn't that, I mean, he didn't really emerge until last year. Oh, That's no, like no, three years. A hundred percent. He did not emerge until last year. Which I, is, I, you know, what I, what I'm kind of carrying the, is Drew Locke. But when answer. he emerged, he was in the MVP race for a minute. Oh, for like, sure. Yeah. You'll no. take that, right? You'll take your third Absolutely. year guy being in, in the, in the consideration for the MVP. Sure. Making yeah. it to an AFC championship game. I, I think third year that's a it's a hell of a mark we can't all be russell wilson and win a super bowl your your first couple of years um well, let's not talk about that uh super bowl <laughs> oh yeah mind. oh I, for, I, for, <laughs> I forget i forget sometimes the uh, other side of the super bowl coin um I, yeah. I know three of them well but that's it um all right your so you you like so, you like the so, quarterbacks and you're you're worried about you would have jones fifth right I think I would have Jones fifth, um, Me too. but I, I wouldn't be sad to take him is the thing. Like I, I wouldn't feel like I'm missing out. Like it, it's not a huge flyer. I don't think, I, mean, I think he's really, really good. I think there's a world where he outside of Trevor Lawrence, he has the highest ceiling or highest floor, but I also think yeah. he has the lowest ceiling of them all. Um, so are you swinging for the fences? Or are you trying to hit a, you know, a, a routine single? Are you trying to move a guy from first to third? Uh, you know, basically a couple of baseball metaphors there. Um, my, my issue with him is not so much his problem as much as it is the game has evolved. I, I told this Gary yesterday and, and, and I'm, I don't remember if it was on, we do two shows on Monday. So it messes me up. It was either on our SBR show or is on our, our live, uh, WCE show. But anyway, I said, Outside of Tom Brady, because Tom Brady is is an assassin. Tom Brady is a psychopath. Tom Brady is we we talked about this in our group chat. Tom Brady is not a well adjusted individual. Okay? No, like like so take him out of it. The last decade of football, all the great quarterbacks have to be mobile. They have to have a mobile aspect to their game. the The idea of you being great and just a pocket passer is gone the way of the dodo unless you are going to give up everything in your life you're going to eat nothing but avocado and protein powder and 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 sleep 6 hours a day and work out you know 18 hours a day unless you're going to do that you you have to have a mobile aspect to your game if you want to be great Agreed. And that's the reason – that's the only knock – I like to make fun of Alabama quarterbacks. I like to 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 hope bad on Alabama players in the NFL because they destroy my life in college. This is not that. He just doesn't do the one thing, I think, in order to go to that next level in the NFL to be really great. He just doesn't have that aspect to his game. All the other quarterbacks do. So, yes, I, I agree with you. I, I think a lot will depend on the system he goes into. If now, if, 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 yeah. they, if you are building around him um, and you can, you have the offensive line that you can give him that extra little bit of time. I, I think, you know, he, he could be really, really good. If you get him into a situation that Joe Burrow was in last year with, you know, Swiss cheese of an offensive line, he's going to get his butt kicked. Yeah, he's going to be, he's going to be Tua. He's going to be yeah. Tua, and Tua is a hell of a lot more athletic than him, but he's going to be Tua in the sense of you, he needs a, a system around him. And this is where we're going to end up with a chicken and egg situation. If the 49ers did move up to take Matt Jones, Mac Jones, I keep calling him Matt Jones, to take Mac Jones, he, he's going to be successful. Because any of these five quarterbacks, which is why I honestly believe any of the four quarterbacks that come after these guys – Go to Kyle Shanahan. They're going to be the best quarterback five, six years from now in this draft class. They're going to have more wins than everybody else in this draft class, and they're going to have better numbers than everybody else in this draft class because of the Kyle factor. Yeah, I mean, that, that I don't disagree with you there. Um, you know, I, I think that's a, that's a great situation for anyone to come into, especially because you don't necessarily have to come in and start right away. 
Like the Niners could absolutely go into next year with Jimmy G. I think that's and, the plan. Yeah. And, you know, to, to have, have Jimmy G be the starter and, you know, to be able to bring a quarterback along. So maybe you are going to take a, a flyer on Trey Lance and get him, you know, the reps in the NFL before you throw him to the Wolves or Mac Jones, I, I think would be a possibility there as well. Or I you think take Cal Pitts and you take Kellen Mond in the third round. Also, that's, also definitely. That's, a, that's, I, that's, that is the, that is, until I hear the number three name called and it's not Pitts, I'm, I'm standing on that stump. That's the if gospel I, if that's I'm, happening. I think if I'm the Niners, else is smoke and mirrors. If I'm the Niners, I don't give up that much to move up to, for Pitts. Yeah, I don't either. I don't. That's, but I also they, can't. They, do, they I can't do that for anybody up. not named Fields, though. Either that's the problem. Exactly. I would give up that much for Justin Fields. I do think he has that home run, you know, swing to him um, uh, that the other guys don't. He's he's everything I would want in this draft at a quarterback. If it's not Fields and it's anybody else, the price you pay it might work out. I think it's gonna work out, but I think the price you pay too high. Yeah, I mean they they gave up a ton to go up to three, and I don't think you go up you give that much to go up to three to take a tight end. I, I just don't. I think if you did want to move up for pitch, would you move you, up you that can, much for the best receiver in the game? Forget that he's a tight end because the Falcons did it a couple of years ago for Julio Jones. They gave up two first round picks, a second round pick, and a fourth round pick to move up to get Julio. And yeah, and I think they're pretty happy with that. I mean, pretty happy with that. He's but one of the you most know, dominant football players in the for game sure. For a but decade. he, but he hasn't. You know, he didn't change like the life of the Falcons. No, like, but a lot did, of that's Dan Quinn's fault. A lot of that's well, sure. The I mean, other coaches around him's fault. You know. Yeah, there's there, there's a lot more that goes into that. But I think if you were looking to move up to take Pitts, you could wait till draft day. And probably pay less. Maybe I think like I think to jump up that early. I mean, so far in advance to, to make that move for a tight end. I mean, I, I I just I don't see it. Okay, all right. So let's let's change gears a little bit. You got at least one guaranteed Northwestern boy coming out. I think you got two. And I was going to really ask do. you. You think we got two? So let's let's talk about them. Get get. Tell me about Slater. Slater's. There are people that think he could be better in, in, than than uh, Soul. That's entirely possible. I mean, Slater was an absolute beast, and you have to look no further than a game that you were at when Northwestern played Ohio State two years ago. Chase Young did nothing, nothing. that game. Take Ohio completely State completely out of that game. Ohio State destroyed Northwestern, That's like right. in every other aspect. Yes, Chase Young, the number two pick of the draft. Did absolutely nothing, and and proven player. to be a monster in the NFL as well. Yeah, definitely yeah. not a fluke by his by his rookie year standards by any means. Did was completely taken out of the game. Yeah, and you know, Slater was that is that kind of game changer. I like think so. he is the guy you could throw in at left tackle and be happy for the next ten to fifteen years. So at he, first he came up he came up as a right tackle and moved out and moved to left. So. He has that versatility. That's what I I'm, like about it. I, I I read a lot of people saying, "Oh, he should go inside. He should be a center. He should be a guard." I I don't. I think if you got that kind of talent to tackle, you put him at tackle. That's right. I agree. And and, and, you, and you just don't worry about it. Yeah. I mean, unless you end up in the Patriots, which then then you'll play all five positions because that's sure. what Bill does. Um. Am I saying Soul's name right? Swell? How- Sewell. Sewell. Okay. Yeah, Let's do that. Sewell. Are people enamored with his age? Do you think that's the reason he's getting the bump? Or is he really that kind of like prospect? I heard somebody today compare him to like the like the next Jonathan Ogden. I thought, oh, oh, <sighs> hold the Pump hell the up, man. This kid bit. might be amazing. But first off, the best offensive lineman in the history of the game was Joe Thomas. He, let's be real careful before we just start throwing out. That's like comparing the next wide receiver to Jerry Rice. Like you do understand the separation between Jerry and Randy is, is a country mile. So let's be real careful about picking 
maybe the two best offensive linemen to ever strap up shoulder pads. Yeah, like that's no, I, who he's I, gonna be. I mean, if you want to do like comps and stuff, that that's fine. But like, you cannot make that kind of assessment on on a tackle. I mean, that's tough. Look, look at look at the Broncos. Look at Garrett Bowles, a guy who was terrible for two for two years. It was yeah. just god awful, and they were w- looking to run him out of town. And then last year. I lost your Sam. I lost your sound. Whatever you just hit. Sorry. Can no, you hear back. me now? Yep. All right. You hit a button. Uh, so, yeah. So, Garrett Bowles turns Garrett Bowles, it around yeah. in year three and all of a sudden is you know, getting a big uh, long term extension and, you know, is the, the left side of the Broncos' offensive line for the next several years. So, yeah. I mean, I, would I, you, I think Sewell can you is plug Sewell, be really good. Can you plug Sewell in if you're the Bengals? Do you take Sewell? And lot and really start to you know protect your quarterback, or and, and here's the question: Or do you go get Joe Burrow's good buddy Jamar Chase and and put that together again? Because ooh, I mean uh, that's that's real exciting. But to me, if you're not, you have to build from the line out. Yeah, I know. If you don't the, have a, if you don't have a line, I'm, your quarterback I'm biased. cannot be standing. I'm biased here because I love Chase and I want him to be paired up with with a uh, with a Joe and I want him to go to a team that I like, which is the Bengals, and I'm okay with that. I I did a thing a couple of weeks ago. I was looking at numbers. The wide receivers that have been taken in the second round over the last two or three years, they're heading like right now production in the NFL. They're head and shoulders better than all the wide receivers taken in the first three uh, in the first round uh, those same three years. Like it's, yeah. it's it's not close, by the way. It's really not close, and that's the only it's the only thing telling me take the alignment. If I could, if I could be in the Bengals management, which the Bengals make no trades ever. I don't know that they've ever made a trade in my life of watching the draft. If I could do anything, I would take Chase, and then I would mortgage the franchise to trade back into the top ten and take Slater. I'd let somebody take Sewell. And then I would come back in and take Slater. That you'd have to give up a lot to to get. Well, back I into think the teams might do it for like this year. You're definitely giving up this year's second round pick, which is an early second, and then next year's first. And then could you maybe only give up another second kind of thing because you're not getting a premium player. You're not moving into the top two ones. Just got you to the three. You can't give up two ones to get you to the and, – and guess what? Those two first-round picks that you got from the 49ers, that next year's first-round pick is going to be late 20s. Okay? So, let's, it, it ain't too far away from the second-round pick you're going to get from the Bengals this year. But in that scenario, the Bengals have already taken their first-round pick this year. They're going to have to give up two first-round picks. So, that would be next year and the year after. You're giving up – like. I, I don't see. I don't see the. I don't know that you got to give up two two first. That's what I I'm think saying. You I, if you want to get back into, if you want to get one of the top ten picks to get out of the first round entirely, because that's what you're doing. Yeah, you're you're telling you're telling you know the Broncos at nine, no first round pick. Well, if the if Patriots the pick, were moved up earlier, they would sell it for for two seconds and a first. Well, sure. I mean, but you know, Bill Belichick is all galaxy brain on this. I mean, he's. <laughs> He, he's playing 4D chess. And, we, we know, say that. It, we say that, but none of his draft picks have been any good in the last, like, five years. So, Well, none of his first-round draft picks have been any good in the first five not years. Not a lot of his second-round guys have been great either. Uh, his day three guys, he's he's better than most. but Which is why he always accumulates as many of those that's you right. know, late he you just, know, third, fourth, he, fifth. He is going to pick the bust in the first round. Yeah, that's so. what he does. All right, who's your second guy for Northwestern that might get taken? Yeah, Greg Newsom, cornerback. Uh, this kid is unbelievable. the The biggest knock on him is that he's ha- he's been banged up a few years, but you know he hasn't played a complete season uh, his entire career. But this past season, he gave up zero touchdowns. Yeah, pretty you know good. he pretty good. People do not throw at Greg Newsom. No one did. And, you know, he is the definition of a lockdown corner. And for him to go out on the pro day and put up a 4 4 40, that's just, I mean, that to me just take, it, it puts him right in there. Yeah. Is, he, is he the best corner in the draft? No. I, I don't know. I mean, he, he will say so, but he has to say so. Yeah. Um, 
you know, th- there's some really good corners in the draft, right. uh, but I, I could absolutely see Greg Newsom going in the late teens, early twenties. Wow. Okay. All right. I could see that. I'd be happy for that too, by the way. I'd be oh, really yeah. happy to see that. So, and then let's get to your Broncos. Mm-hmm. You're the GM. Not what yeah. do you think they're going to do? What do you do? What are you doing to make your football team better? What do you I'm, think your biggest need is first? Let's hit that. Well, so the the huge question is a quarterback. Um, but at nine, you might – I mean, if some of these mocks are to be believed and Justin Fields is going to drop – Are you begging for nine, Fields to just fall? You're if, just hoping that there, all absolutely. these guys are talking so much trash. You're just, you're just retweeting Dan Orlovsky's like <laughs> trash talk about him all day long. No, see, I, I, I can't do that. But if he's there at nine, you absolutely take him. Oh, yes. Not even but, close. It's not even close. Do you think you can move up? That's the question. If you are going to move up, where are you, are you going to move up? Who, so, who wants to dance? Uh, Miami, Miami at six? There's reports today that Miami's trying to move out of six again. I mean, they're, I, they're I definitely to... think you fields might not be there at six, but one of the five will be because Cincinnati's not going to take quarterback and they're not trading. They're going to take either uh Sewell, Sewell or, or, Chase. Or, or Chase. So, yeah. so that's, that's it. And Pitts will probably be gone then. So if you get to six, you've got a choice between two. Yeah. And the question is, do you want to mortgage the future on that? Or do you run it back with Drew Locke uh, for one more year? No. See, uh, year three, you know, we just talked about it with Josh Allen. Uh, that, that's a, like, I, that, that's Locke what I'm not Josh Allen. Well, that, that's, that's true. He but, doesn't have those tools, man. Well, I, I don't disagree. Um, you know, the offense, I think, is a quarterback away from being dominant. I think However, your football team is a quarterback away from legitimately competing for the Lombardi. Yes. I think you're I, one I, of the, I think you're one of the two most improved and probably best rosters in the NFL. And the other one is also a trigger man away. That's Washington. I think you two are the most complete teams without a quarterback that I've seen in a long time. Yeah. And I, I think you're right, but he, here's what I would do. I would look at my defense and say, I've done a ton to, to shore up that defense. You know, Von Miller's back. Uh, Justin Simmons re-signed, bringing in Kyle Fuller from the Bears 30 minutes after he was cut by the Bears. Biggest no-brainer. Like When I saw the Bears cut him, I'm like, oh, yeah, he's just buy him a ticket to Denver just right now. He wants to go play with Vic Fangio. The biggest weakness on the Broncos' defense is at middle linebacker. And there's a kid from Penn State. Oh, boy. Put Micah Parsons on that. Wow, uh, you take Micah. Would you take Micah over Trey Lance? Yes. Whoa. I was not expecting to have this conversation. <laughs> I would, because if, if you give up zero points, then I think I, with, with, with the tools around him, you can build an offense for Drew Locke. And consider, Drew Locke has not had the same offensive coordinator in back-to-back seasons since, like, freshman year well, in college. All right. So let me, let me tell you my Drew Locke situation, and you might be more right than me on this, okay? I – I saw two years of Baker, and I was out. I was out. I was done. And I told you last year, be real careful about Drew Locke. He looks a whole lot like Baker. And then year three of Baker, Baker got an actual real head coach. He got an actual real offensive play caller, a grown-up in the room, and not some moron. And he is not the best quarterback in the NFL, but it works within the tools that he has. He he is easily a top. 12 quarterback in the NFL and and that's when your team is loaded like the Broncos like the Browns are right now with a lot of surrounding talent you don't have to be the best quarterback you don't have to be a top three or top four guy the 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 issue is can he make that leap can he make that jump do you have the offensive system around him he's got to get better at his accuracy that's the problem Baker didn't have an accuracy problem Baker had decision making problem Drew oh, yeah. Locke no. threw some bad balls last year, and Jared Judy obviously oh, he, he gave up frustrated. on it. He just gave up he on it. He was frustrated. Yeah, and I don't blame him. I mean, you've got – you know, Judy had 
a ton of drops. I think Jerry Judy had the most drops in the, that in were the not league. his fault. That yes. was not his fault. Yeah, it like, was like look 70 at, something percent of his passes were deemed not catchable. Yeah. And you know, he he got frustrated. Is Trey Lance going to come in and be that much more accurate? You know, coming in from I think Trey Lance from, would totally change your offense. So it's not necessarily an accuracy issue as guys are going to be wide open because now they have to concern themselves with the run. Yeah. I mean, it, it's another year with Mike Munchak as offensive line coach. I mean, I, I like he, that. I like the offensive system being able yeah. to run it back. You got some cohesiveness there. Mm-hmm. The, the O line you know, brings everyone back. Uh, Juwan James took last year off for COVID. You know, he says he wants to come back. He's ready to go. Something I've been seeing a little bit more of is, uh, you know, if the Broncos were to go and take a Rashawn Slater at nine, I would be over the moon. You know, another Northwestern guy yeah. going. But you put Rashawn Slater at right tackle, and yeah. that offensive line is just Locked set. Up. Locked it up. Is, I mean, you've got a, an amazing offensive line. But the nice thing, if you were to do something of that nature, A, your running game gets so much better. Mm-hmm. But, but B – if Drew Locke doesn't succeed in that system, now you know the answer next year. Yeah, exactly. And, and every year, there are three or four quarterbacks that come open on the market. Mm-hmm. Can, it, 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 does Russell Wilson really get pissed off and say, I'm out for real this time? And can you be a, a landing spot for a guy like him? Can you go sign one in free agency? Um, or can th- you then say, we're a quarterback away. Let's sell three first-round draft picks, move all the way up to the top, We'll take the best quarterback and draft whoever that ends up being, and and now we've got our team for the next three years at least. We're we're in that Seattle window of of Russell Wilson. We need to win in three years because we're gonna Von Miller's gonna fall off. Some of these other pieces are gonna begin to go away, but we're here and we just need somebody who won't cock it up. Yeah, I, I think that that makes a lot of sense. You you mentioned Seattle. Um, Interesting note that I just uh, learned not too long ago. There's only two teams in the NFL that have never picked first overall, and that's Seattle and Denver. And Denver. Jacksonville had Jackson. This is Jacksonville's first ever number one pick. Yep. Um, but like you would, you know, to go up and get you know the number one pick next year. My Brownies have picked first overall, I think, four times in my life. Yeah, no. In, in, in 38 years of being alive, I think they've done it four times. And you've got other franchises that have never done it. Yeah. And, you know, that that's something that I know the Broncos take pride in. Um, but that, that's just a, a well, fun you, little but, anecdote. But let's say you're you're picking number one overall, but you're doing it because you've mortgaged the you, franchise. You tr- yeah. Not because you earned it, but because you paid for it. Sure. and That's a different know, thing. I, and I think, like, if you're looking, you know, for the future – that that absolutely makes a ton of sense. Can Drew Locke make take that step? Can he become Josh Allen? Maybe, maybe not. But if you are, if you take a Trey Lance, Mac, I have suggest take Mac Jones. I think that'd be a terrible idea be, because because of fit. Because you know, you're be, fit. Yeah, yeah. I think Matt Jones, Mac Jones, needs to go to a Kyle Shanahan. He needs to go to a a a, a Sean McVay. He needs to go somewhere where the head coach and the play caller are one and the same, and they are a young genius. He needs to go to a Josh McDaniels, as much as I really don't want him with the Patriots. Like, like I think he needs my, – My feelings about Josh McDaniels are – He won, I, I got, he won I, I a got playoff things. game with, 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 with Tim Tebow. That's, okay. That's like magical. <laughs> Right there. That's that. That's stuff that you can't write in a Disney movie script. All right. Yeah, and he got he got he got you know ridden out of town quickly after. That's fine. He I, just, no, he not, just came home. He didn't get ridden no, out of town. What, he just came what, home. What what he did was he went. You know, Josh McDaniels was sent as a double agent by Belichick to come in and knock off the Broncos because the Broncos had always been the Patriots' bugaboo in the yes, playoffs. Yes, and that is a fact. They sent they sent in McDaniels to just you know sabotage the program year and a half in he's gone he's right back to new england and you know the broncos need a need peyton manning to come in peyton, and, peyton and manning had never beaten bill in the playoffs he'd never beaten tom in the playoffs in his entire career in indianapolis and he gets 
he gets to the Broncos and he just makes them their whipping boy in the playoffs. Yeah, love it. It, it, <laughs> it just it really bothered me because I know that's not a Peyton thing. That's a Denver thing. And it became a Peyton thing and it bothered me. But anyway, <laughs> neither here nor there. Um, what do you think the Broncos actually will do? Let's let's do that. Let's so you would take Micah Parsons. That shocked the hell out of me. It's a great pick. Uh, you're getting probably the best defensive player in the draft. Yeah. Um, I I could I could see them taking a corner. Um, I, okay. I don't know which one, but I could I could see them. Uh, you know, maybe taking um, the kid from Alabama, yeah, kid from Sir, Alabama Sir Tan. Yeah. Um, I, the this kid from South Carolina that everyone's really high on as well. Yep. Could, they could go corner. Uh, which would which would make a ton of sense, man. Um, if, if the first because I do think, I do think, if you stay at nine, I think there's a world where that really is the first defensive player off the board. It's entirely possible, yeah. If, if that's the case, the cornerback can't be the first defensive player off the board. I just that goes against everything that I believe is right and holy and 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 the way football is built. It's also the reason you can't take a receiver number one overall either. As much as they've now become like the second most important thing, the further away you get from the football, the least important you are. This is not how you build a football team in my brain, in my mind. It, it, it that would that would go against everything that I believe in. <laughs> yeah, no, I I think I'm right along there with you. It's, you know, you you can. The, the most important is the center the quarterback yeah. is next. And then you, you know, absolutely you start at the middle and you work your way out. You work your way out. Um, what I, I would be, honestly, I'd be surprised if they stayed at nine. If the, I, I think they might be targeting one of the quarterbacks. If he's not there for him, if the price to move up uh, is too high um, and you get to nine, I wouldn't be surprised to see him move back just because you know, if you are going to get a corner, there's three or four really, really good ones. Built, you know, you can pick up some pretty solid draft capital by moving back. So let me give you a second scenario for my okay. boy Joe Burrow that would make me sing the praises of everybody on earth. Let let's say let's say they realize they're getting offers for 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 the number five pick that they just can't say no to. Do do they move back to nine? where they can still get Slater easily. There's a chance Sewell will be there. Yeah. There's a hell, there's a chance that that Chase might fall there, depending on if everybody's jumping up to get quarterbacks and stuff. Do they well, sell a Ari- Arizona Arizona's gonna take a wide receiver if they stay. Uh at, man. Okay. Where, they, where's Arizona? Six or seven? Yeah, I but think. man, the defense sucks. Sure. But they need a receiver badly. Uh, I guess you're right. They probably do. I mean, they have – hang on now. They have the best receiver in football from two years ago. Yeah. Do they but badly need they, one? It's like saying – I mean, I love Larry Fitzgerald, but, you know, he's – I'm not worried about Larry Fitzgerald. Uh, they got new Hopkins, no, baby. I, I, yeah, but you need someone alongside new Hopkins. And there are teams that don't have a new Hopkins that are winning football games. Yeah, well – got to have two of those not guys Arizona. to be good. Uh, if, you, if you've got – if you're Arizona and you're um, – uh, what's his What's his face? Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah, you, you're you're building offense. That's well, what you're doing. I, I, yeah, I definitely think Cliff is coaching for his job this year. So yeah, and I, I think you're you're going to take a wide receiver, be it okay. Chase, be it Waddle. Well, if you can if you can move back to nine, I, I I absolutely think if you move back to nine, at least Slater or Sewell will be there. I agree. Then then you get extra picks for next year to continue to build that line. Yeah, and and I think that that makes a ton of sense. That would be the and smartest thing if you weren't gonna. They're not gonna take Chase, which I. The smart move is to not do that. That's what I I want to happen. But no, the 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 smart move for Cincinnati is to take Sewell yeah. or Slater. I, I haven't or, seen a lot of people. Like I, said, I, I would back like, up. I would back up one, and I would take Slater with with the nine pick or 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 the eight pick or tenth pick or whoever wants to move up to yeah. to get him. Um, I wouldn't move out of the top ten because I don't think Slater's lasting much longer than that. I think a lot of teams need offensive line help. I wouldn't move too far back. But yeah, I, I think I think if he's there for Dallas at ten, I think he goes to Dallas. Uh, I think Dallas has to take a defensive player. I think they might throw Jerry off the yacht if he takes another offensive weapon. <laughs> they're hanging <laughs> like forty-five it's, it's, and fifty, and they're still losing every game. 
It's Jerry Jones. I, I you know it. If they take an offensive Jones. player, I don't care if it's a lineman. If they take an offensive player, Lil Jerry is take pushing Big Jerry off the boat. <laughs> we we are going to say R.I.P. to Jerry Jones after that. Well, all right, Sam. Let's get off the draft a little bit. I want to talk a little hockey, and then we'll get you out of here. Um, absolutely. Have you liked this year with basically them playing in pods? and seeing them play the same team like 16 times all year? It's really interesting. Um, and I, I've been, I've actually kind of been a fan of it to a certain extent. Hey, now, I mean, if I, I was a Colorado fan, I would be a fan of it because I think you got the easiest damn pod. Well, I mean, Vegas is also playing out of their mind. I, I think oh, the Yeah, easiest... but there are two teams there, I guess, as opposed to – because I think the other teams in the pod are pretty bad. Minnesota's been playing really, really good. Um, you know, don't sleep on them. They've got the rookie of the year, Kirill, Kirill yeah. Kaprizov. I'm still sleeping um, on them. Then sleep away and, and <laughs> you know, watch them show up in your nightmares. But uh, no, I, I think the West, what, what's interesting about hockey this year is there really aren't that many playoff chases going on. No. Like most because every, we're playing in pods, you, you've kind of yeah, got. Everything is pretty much set. Nights. There's, you know, the the biggest question mark is in the cent is in the central, yeah. um, and that seems to be working itself out. You know, the Blackhawks are fading. Nashville's playing out of their mind. Um, Big win last night. Big win last yeah. night. Yeah, and and you know the Hawks are are struggling. Um, yeah. You know they they had they were they were there. They had a really really great early slate, and then they re- played Florida and Tampa and Carolina a ton. Um, yeah, it's like there's not a lot of playoff races going on, but I, I think you know, it's going to be a real exciting playoffs. I think uh, when we get to the playoffs, I think some of the teams that have been really dominant are going to catch like um, like shock and all when they have to actually play another playoff team because they haven't played a lot of great teams. And so they're going to get hit by a great team. It's like, oh, shit. This is the Flyers. Like, wait a minute. Well, and, and that, that's what's going to make this playoffs really, really interesting because, you know, you're still going to have divisional play for the first two rounds. But once you get to the final four, then you're – like, because we don't know how much better the Central is than that, the West, that's right. than the Canadian division, than the East. You know, our, Tampa looks phenomenal. Tampa looks, Carolina looks yeah. fantastic. Florida looks really, really good. Colorado is this offensive juggernaut. Like, well, not just yeah. offensive juggernaut. Y'all also are one of the one of the best defensive teams out there too. Yeah, you you give it, up the less uh, the 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 short the least amount of of short goals out of anybody in the league. Like, I think you're the be- most complete team. Yeah, I mean Colorado I looks think so. They, they look absolutely fantastic. Um, you know Vegas looks really Vegas really good. Looks great, I, lo- I love them. Bru- my bro, yeah. hey, my Bruins look really good too now. But sure. I think that's sure. the toughest division in the in the thing though. The like, East. I absolutely think they're cannibalizing each other. Well, I mean, that, that's the case across the board. But, uh, you know, Washington, uh, Islanders, Penguins, Bruins, I mean, they're all right there. The Rangers are four points back. And, you know, because it's all, you know, in, uh, in division play, you know, it's really tough to gain ground, especially, yes. you know, if, if games are going to overtime or whatnot. Um, which is you know, kind of what the Blackhawks are running into. You know, they had three games with the Preds and got blown out last night and got two more coming up. If the Blackhawks don't win those two, they're cooked. When when you go against when you have to play like these four game series that they're playing a lot of and, it, and a, and a hot love it, goalie it, comes in, holy yeah. it's so frustrating. It's just it's like playoff hockey. You know you're not scored on that guy, but you gotta play him four damn nights in a row. It's playoff hockey. Uh, yeah. And, and like, that's what, that's something that this, this pod system this year has kind of brought is you're playing the same team two d- days in a row. You know, you've got like this sort of familiarity with each other. You have to raise your game. It, it's what you get in like a long playoff series. Yeah. So. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. It's been weird. It's frustrating. I really hate the Flyers, and it's like every night I turn on the Bruins game, and it, it, once a week it's they're playing the Flyers. Like, what in the hell, man? Like, <laughs> I don't want to watch. I hate this team, but um, it's 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 been interesting. I'm very much ready for next year to get back to 
seen cross country matchups and yeah. your team really going on a road and and you know because I think some of those long road trips that teams take throughout a season really help gel a team. Well, I mean, they have been long road trips. Um, you know, you're spending a week and a half on the road. You're only going to three, you're only going to three cities. Yeah, you're but just you going, are spending. Yeah, you're spending four nights in Chicago. You're spending three nights here. You're spending, yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. They're still so, doing it. It's just weird. It's just different. It is different. It, it, it's it's bizarre. You know, having Tampa, Florida, Carolina in with the the Blackhawks. Yes. And, the yeah. Red Wings yeah. and you know, having the Blackhawks Red Wings rivalry has been fun, even though the Red Wings are, are terrible. terrible. They're just terrible. Um, but you know, one from, of the best franchises in all of sports there, has just been I, awful for a, a while now. They have. And, but I, I think that they're, they're doing it the right, like quote unquote, the right way. Yeah, you know, they're building it back up. Steve Eiserman is, I hate the Red Wings so much. Um, you know, Growing up in Colorado, living in Chicago, that, that, that's some real, that's some real hate. Yep. Um, Steve Eisenman, I think, is doing it absolutely the right way. And it's going to be another year or two, but they are accumulating high draft picks. They're building that farm system. They're doing exactly what you need to do to make an extended run in the future. You know, well, America's taking over the sport, man. Um, yeah. More what, what, drafted what, players what, are coming from college hockey in america than from canada yes but most uh, half of those college hockey players are canadian I so about half of them i don't know half, i think oh, you use the word I, half pretty loosely now I, I i haven't i haven't run the numbers but there are a lot oh, that's a lot players. of college hockey and i think a lot of those guys are now they're all from massachusetts or minnesota but like it's it's as close to canada as you're gonna get but i, I think a lot of them are from america they're American. I, I'm not. I'm not saying all, you know, all of them are no. Canadian, but there are a lot of Canadian uh, college hockey players. Um, what speaking of Canada, I, I'm what I'm really interested to see is when it comes time to the Final Four, what's going to happen to the team that comes out of the North? They're going to have to come to the U.S. and not go back and, and not go back. Yeah. You know, they're they're going to who knows where they're going to be playing? Maybe it's Minnesota or Chicago or something like that. But that that'll be a, a real interesting, you know, not having a, that home game for Toronto. If, if that it's probably going to be Toronto. I was about to say, it, I think there that's a that's probably the easiest yeah. lot of them all. Yeah, no, <laughs> you know, Winnipeg has an amazing goaltender, and if he if Hellebuck gets hot, then that, that's it's hard it's to, a long it's a long weekend if you if the goaltender locks up the locks up the pipes, you can't do anything yeah. about it. But I, I think at the end of the day, you know, Toronto is easily the best team in Canada right now. I think so. the record. I think they're pretty far ahead too. Um, standings. You know, they, they're four points up on Winnipeg. You know, yeah, they that's, have, yeah, that's second. So, and you know, five up on Edmonton, and then Montreal's right there. But yeah, Calgary, Vancouver, Ottawa. They're not going to come anywhere near the playoffs. So, oh, you no. know, having having a first round of you know Toronto versus Montreal. You know that that'll be a lot of fun. You know, some original six thing going on. Um, you know that could that could be a lot of fun for the first round of the playoffs. There, that's right, that's right. Sam, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it, everybody. Uh, we appreciate you uh, checking us out. And if you're listening on iTunes, leave that five star review. Check out my boys from West Lot Pirates. Um, you can find their podcast same place as you find ours it's just called the west lot pirates you're gonna hear all the northwestern stuff uh you got sam you got anything else you want to plug um just our live draft pod you know that we have so much fun with that and you know that's something that we've been doing uh with the west lot pirates just the three of us for 11 years now wow. um and the fact that we're able to bring you guys in and, and do it together is just phenomenal and we have so much fun with it and you know, it's just just such a good time and you know if you have the chance to jump in and watch it live, you know, we'd love to hear from everyone who's you know, listening live, hear those questions. And uh, it's just going to be a, a good time. We're going to have to get John a team. He's going to have to pick a team so he can have a horse in the race. He can't just float through the, the 32 teams and give an opinion. That's what he we, does. We That's all have rolls. skin in the game. <laughs> I need a pound of flesh from John on one team. I'll give him crap about that Thursday. John will be on with us Thursday night, uh, my night show. So, Yeah, he'll, he'll be wearing his uh, his uh, Steve McNair Titans jersey on draft night, I I'm would sure imagine. He will. So. I'm sure he will. 
So thank you, Sam. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. We're going to get out of here. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.